All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. I'm Joe Spiegel Vaughn alongside Cedric Maxwell. It's been a crazy week in the NBA, so let's get right into it, man. We got the uh, Boston Celtics fell to the uh, Golden State Warriors. You're going to have to give me the scoop on that one, Matt, because I didn't catch the whole uh, game because I was too busy watching OKC, the Thunder, pick up their first loss of the season after a historic start. We'll also talk about that. And, of course, what's going on down in Philly with Joel Embiid and his three-game suspension. But first, man, fill me in on what happened against the Warriors, man. Uh, looks like Steph Curry had one of his classic shooting performances at TD Garden. You had uh, Derek White going off from deep as well. Uh, Jason Tatum had an impressive stat line, but I guess it wasn't enough, man. What, what, what happened? Well, I think that there was a combination of things. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on Tatum early in the basketball game. They were being very physical. Uh, knocking them around, knocking them off the ball. So they had to have other people score without Jalen Brown, who has missed again another game for for uh, abductor or something strange. Third, third game, right? Three consecutive? Yeah, or no? that he, okay. that he's missed another game. And then not having Porzingis. Porzingis is practicing right now, I think, just doing one-on-one stuff. Uh, so you, you, miss, you miss the troops. Uh, and then the biggest thing, I think, that uh, Drew Holiday, who's been so consistent from the three-point line, uh, was 0 for 6 last night uh, from mm-hmm. the three-point line. So, yeah, the combination of things. And the Celtics still had the opportunity to win the basketball game. They got back in it. They tied it. And then uh, Steph Curry became Steph Curry. And uh, it was just hard hard to stop him at the end. Uh, and and not having an Kata played really well, gave him inside presence. Al in the second half. So there were some things that happened. Um, but there was a good game, a game that was winnable uh, for the Celtics. But uh, it just shows you that, uh, you know, what you have to do in this league, especially when you're playing with the top tier teams. Is Kata in, in um, Al, is that it at the center position right now? Because I know Lou Cornette exited, he left the game against the Warriors. I don't know how, how severe the injury is, but uh, it's getting really thin up front. You know? Yeah, he said, he said hamstring. Uh, tightness in the uh, hamstring. Okay. So he will be probably evaluated and he won't be available for a while. Um, so, you know, they, they are getting thin. They're getting very thin. So it's it's going to be a, you know, uh, um, a little area here that they have to kind of get through. Um, i tell you one thing I, I, I've thought about. And let, let me give a shout out to a couple of people right now. Uh, who listen to our podcast. Uh, you know, I see you on the road. You guys come up to me. There was a young woman in Atlanta the other day who played. She came up and she was like, oh, my God, I listen to your podcast all the time. Man, hey. k- kudos to you people yeah, who listen absolutely. to our podcast. You know, you, uh, you only make us stronger, man. We have a great time with you. And whenever you see me on the road or if you want to contact me, you know, hit me up. Uh, you know, I'm at, at Cedric Maxwell at Comcast.net. Uh, so, so, uh, you know, you guys have done a great job of, uh, making us strong as a, a network and we got some, uh, some surprises coming up for you that, yeah, uh, you it, that, uh, you know, you guys are really going to like. So, uh, anyway, that was that good. That was, that's what I wanted to give, but you kind of hit Thank me you. with a story. Yeah. You hit me with a story the other day. You know, we had a, a guest on Chuck D. And you told me a Chuck D story, and I was like, "What? What happened?" So I'm the yeah, Chuck D story. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> I'm great. I'm glad you reminded me because I should have saved it for 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 a segment on the show. Uh, so I get a call from Chuck D, man. I'm cleaning my dishes, and as you can imagine, I'm making this face. I'm like, Chuck D's hit me at work. Like, hey, I'm not mad, but I, I'm like, I, I need to dry my hands. So I put, put the dishes down. I grab a towel. I'm like scrambling. It must have been good. Good guys. We we had Chuck D on our show with right our right show. okay yeah yeah so exactly right so we had him on our show during the finals right and you know for him to call me i haven't heard from him since you know we, we spoke a little bit after that after we released the episode but that was about it um I, I pick up the phone finally before it was about to stop ringing and chuck's like joe sway man i'm hitting the bank right now i got you you know what i mean we're going to you know I, I, don't worry about it I, I'll, I'll get that for you and i'm like bank what he does the classic like you, you know when you can hear someone look at their phone and then they be like that? <laughs> he goes man he goes i think i called the wrong joe sway i go the wrong joe sway i go check you got two joe sways in your phone that's incredible max i've met two joe sways my entire oh, life my God. one of them was an uber driver who pulled up. 
<laughs> and he was not as excited as I was <laughs> when I told him. I'm like, just right. <laughs> what up, man? Oh my god, that was what so funny. Dude. And the that, other that just just way I you, met that shows you how our podcast works, man. That the, the people that we have relationships with and we talk to. Uh, it's so cool, man. To, it you know, is, we got, man. We, we got we got to get back with our, our guy, uh, uh, Ice Ice Cube. Uh, oh yeah, that was fun and, too. Uh, that was yeah, that was a great episode. But also to see him walking into um, L.A. into the stadium, you know, the, Yo, you know, singing work, singing the classic work, track. Yeah, 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 yeah man, that was man. that was so cool, man. But yeah, that was. Yeah. But your Joe Sway story, that was so funny. I mean, that <laughs> man, one, you know what's funny to I guess to hit you back. And, you know, you got like, Joe Sway. And he told me he owed you. I got some money for you. I know you're, you're well, basically. I'm like, huh? what, what are you talking about? Apparently, that's an electrician. He's got Joe Sway, the electrician now, <laughs> helping him out. I mean, man. that, that story is no different from the uh, me and my, one of my ex-teammates, Norm Nixon, who we're going to try to hook up with uh, Debbie Allen. And have her on as as a guest. Yeah, man, that'd be great. And, uh, uh, Norm Nixon's married to Debbie Allen, uh, the great entertainer, the great actress and director. And um, all of a sudden, one night, I get a call from um, Day. I'm like, get a call from Norm Nixon around about Christmas time. I said, uh, it was like Norm. It's like, yo, he said, yo, Cedric the Entertainer, what's going on? <laughs> I said, yo, Norm. I said, what's happening, man? How you doing? He goes. Yeah, I got two tickets for you tonight for this show. I said, what show? He said, a show in Long Beach. I said, I'm here in Boston, Long Beach, California. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, no. Across the country. I know. I'm, what are you talking about? He said, oh, shit. I thought this was Cedric the Entertainer. I, I said, this is Cedric Maxwell. He goes, oh, man. I'm sorry, man. I, I had these tickets for Cedric the Entertainer, and I just got you <laughs> confused having the Cedric in my phone book. So, yeah, yeah those things weird. do happen with, uh, you know, mix-ups with uh, uh, people and situations. kind of crazy. You know what's funny, too, Max? We ended up talking uh, we were talking hoops for, like, 20 minutes, and he's just like, yo, I got to call Joe Sway, man. Yo, I got to go. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, man, do your thing. <laughs> he never called wow. the dude. Wow. Call yeah, that was wow. funny, man. That was funny. But anyways, so, yeah, as the Celtics picked up their first loss at TD Garden this season, uh, the, uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder picked up an L on the road against the Nuggets. Now, it's going into this game, I feel like people were wondering how, how long can they stretch this winning streak, you know, seven in a row. The first time in franchise history, they reached six, right? Stretch it to seven. It's the first time in NBA history because they, they beat they beaten every team by at least – 12 points or more, right? Mm -hmm. So going into this game, I'm like, man, the Nuggets, they handed them the, the home opener loss. You know, they're not going to forget that. You know, these are the 2023 NBA yeah, champions brutal. with Jokic. And, man, Westbrook turned back the clock, Max. Dropped damn near 30 and uh, went off. And it was a heck of a game. Yeah, man, it was a heck of a game. So, Well, you know, I think there's some, there's some parody. And it's starting to be in, in the league. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying anything about the Celtics until, you know, they're at full strength. You know, till you bring back Porzingis, right. you have Brown back. This team is a hell of a team. They, they, could, they could repeat, but, again, it's going to be the health of their team. Uh, hopefully this thing with uh, Jalen Brown doesn't last for so long as abductor or so, it's something to do with, you know, the area down there that people have been, you know, uh, stomach area. So, you know, right. one of those things that could happen, like, like Van Cara, uh, down in, uh, Orlando, uh, Orlando, yeah. he dropped, uh, damn near 50, almost had a 50 triple double. And, uh, you know, right. he's been out and Orlando has been suffering since. So when you're missing key players, other guys have to step up. And, uh, with the Celtics the other day, there were some guys who played really well, but, uh, if Drew Holiday had had just a Drew Holiday game, you know, uh, Celtics would have probably won that thing easily. But, you know, those things do happen in, in, a, in a league like this. So see the Celtics, can they bounce back now? Prize Fix is the best place to get real money sports action. They get over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings. Prize Fix has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all, so you just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up 100 times your cash, your game all season long. 
on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get into the action in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy, so your lineups stay even if one of your players gets hurt or injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks keeps your lineup live. Sign up today and give $50 instantly. When you play $5, you don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus because it's guaranteed. I think Steph Curry will get more than four three-pointers this week or Anthony Edwards more than 27 points. Cook up some hot takes with your friends and win real money this basketball season. Get your crew to run your game on price picks. Download the app today. Use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. And, you know, some of the prize picks you could be looking at, Luka Doncic for more than 31 and a half points, Steph Curry for more than four three-pointers, Anthony Davis, more than 11 boards, the freak Giannis for more than 29 and a half points. Again, download the app today. Use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. What do you think is, is it's going on with these injuries, man? Like, I know I feel like we, we, we've reached a point in the season where we, we start having these conversations, but I can't remember a season like this where we're two weeks in and there's just a dozen stars out. You know, teams are missing guys left and right. It's not just a, a, a few guys anymore, you know? I feel like every team's dealing with it. Well, I've, I've said this before, Josue. I think that, you know, Either you rest your body or your body is going to rest you. Yeah, a lot yeah. of times what players do now is they don't rest, uh, you know, during the off season. During the off season for us, uh, you know, when I played, that was a time to, you know, let your body relax, let your body heal, you know, mm-hmm. do all these. Well, these dudes go right back into workouts. They go, yeah. they have a personal trainer. You, you don't give your body an opportunity after a long, grueling, like the Celtics, eight months. Celtics played eight months. And then, you know, you then you got these guys lifting weights. You got these guys, you know, working out with the players and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, just, you know, your, your body only can take so much. And uh, especially when we think about the older players. A little, right. a little concerning with me with the younger players right now. But, uh, you know, you're going to have uh, certain injuries when you're in, you're in the NBA. You don't think it's too many games? Look, we've been playing that many games forever, Josue. Man, yeah, I know. The NBA has been playing that many games forever. I don't know, um, though, Max. If you just stretch this thing a week or Joshua, two, hold, you know, I'm not saying hold, cut hold, the 82. On. Listen, Max, hold, I'm not hold, saying cut no, the 82. Hold on, hold on. But why do they got to play four games a week, Max? Let me tell you about it. Well, you're, you're looking at a situation where you're just trying to do timing. Why was it, why was it so during the 80s that most guys played? 75 to 80 games, 82 games. I played one year. I had a chance to play 82 one year. I missed it because Bill Fish sat me down for a game in mm-hmm. Philly and still told me to dress out. But, you know, it was 82 games. That was that was just a badge of honor. Yeah. But now I think that you look at the players, the, the players in this situation, they, and also management, will sit a guy down, yeah. you know, and not let him play because these guys are commodities. They, they're, they're huge commodities. When you think about, they are, they are conglomerates in themselves. When you have a Jalen Brown at $300 million, you have a Tatum at $300 million, You can't put that product out there if it's hurt, because mm-hmm. then you want to elongate the opportunity for a guy to, you know, uh, further his career. I mean, during my career, just way when when I first got in the league, the guys were talking about, yo, man, if you can get to 10 years, man, that's magical. And I remember getting to 11, could have played 12, but it was, and I really wasn't taking care of my body. Now you look at the guy, when you get in this 10th year, you look at a, a Jason Tatum, it's mm-hmm. like, man, them jokers, like, all right, how long are they going to play? How long has Tatum been playing now? He was, what, 18 when he came in? 19. 19. So 19. Yeah. What is he now? 24. 20. So he's been in the league six years. Yeah. So when he gets to the 10th year mark, he's going to be at 28 or whatever it is, 28 years old. Not so, even 30. so yeah. yeah, the guys have started earlier. 
uh, and um, just pushing their bodies. That's what they're doing. They're pushing their bodies, and you know you don't have the guys who have been in college for four or five years. You know, you you know some of these guys with COVID yeah, yeah. went in college yeah. like five years. Now, you know, you, if you're a real player in this league, uh, the guy Cooper Flag is that his name down at Duke? Yeah, top how, prospect. How, how, how long is he gonna be in? How long is he gonna be in college? One and done. You already know. Well, well, what you what you gonna do? You got one. You got your books. Do you, do, you, do you, how many classes do you go to? <laughs> you, do you go for you go to the first semester? I don't know if that, was, like that, if that was me, bro. That was me. I'd be going to that first semester, and that's it. <laughs> I'll I'll take the classes that are gonna make me eligible to play. After mm -hmm. that, I'm not gonna really care one way or the other. I'm I'm getting ready for you know my my M NBA career. Where I'm gonna be, Dan, they're saying with with flag, they're talking about, they're projecting right now it's gonna be someplace in in the area of a billion dollars that he's gonna make while he's in the league. So, so that right. you know, I know people. Oh, you gotta get your education. Education is good, and and get your education so you can, you know, guard your money. But yeah. you're talking about a billion dollars, like Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum in his career. Probably gonna make some place near a billion dollars, if not more. So, really? so that so what I'm saying is that teams are trying to take care of their players, and they put them in situations where they're not gonna play them as much if they have small nagging injuries. Right. Yeah, it's a big investment, Max. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, at least to some of these guys, you got the NIL opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, where you can kind of make your money mm -hmm. on the side. Like that wasn't something available for players. So there were a lot of, there was, there was a time where, where players were like, man, I, I'm not going to miss out on this check. You know what I mean? Like maybe they weren't ready uh, basketball wise or whatever, or maybe they were just maybe a year or two away from really being like a top 20 or, or, or a lottery pick. But instead they're like, you know what? I'm just going to enter the draft now because I'm trying to get to the money. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Though. But players like Cooper well, Flagg don't have to worry about that. Let me know. let me just say this, Joe, so so we understand it. What the I, what the hell was Cedric Maxwell would have been like in college, making a million dollars? Who what who could have told him what? I mean, are you serious? Are you are you how are you even co how are you even coachable <laughs> at that point that you making <laughs> that you making a million dollars that you. <laughs> And you're making, you know, you're getting checks with thirty and forty thousand dollars every month or whatever. You're actually, been giving Finch attitude, coach. Oh, attitude. Man, man. coach I'm not feeling uh, it today, man. At eight, at eighteen, I came to college at seventeen. At seventeen years old, oh. coming from coming from Kinston, where I was working, uh, you know, on a farm one time for two dollars an hour, working a dollar and a half an hour, working in the field, uh, working in tobacco. Now all of a sudden, you're telling me I got millions of dollars at my disposal that I, I mean, I can't even, I can't even fathom how that, how that, how that, how that, that works. I just, it, it, it's beyond me. I, I'm, I'm surprised that more players aren't getting in trouble in college yeah, uh, yeah, sure. because of the opportunities and, you know, what was that thing is to do Travis Hunter, uh, who is in, um, who plays for uh, Colorado for, um, for coach prime. My Deion Sanders. Oh, okay. Gave his girlfriend a million dollars. Gave her a million dollars and get, gave his girlfriend a million fucking dollars, Joe Sweat. Oh, Joe no, Sweat. Do you, you hear what I'm telling you? He gave his girlfriend a million dollars. <laughs> who wants to be a kid. who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> That's the greatest line you could drop. <laughs> Pick up line that you could drop. Yo, I'm going to give you, I'm going to change your life. I'm going to give you a million. I'm, can you, just like, you know, when you're doing doing one of these, I, I've seen this thing where they do on uh, TikTok sometimes or Facebook where somebody has one of these and they're talking, uh, their son is talking and the family's in the background together on speaker and they said, uh, in your account right now is $1.5 million dollars. And the family goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What did you say? You got I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I can't imagine what if you'd have been just, just for instance, put you in that. You're at home and you're in front of mom and pops and you're going through your account and you got it on speaker and it said, 
just the way you uh, in your account right now is a million point five. What you, what was your pops do? Oh man, <laughs> just wait. Are you selling drugs? What are you doing? <laughs> what, what are you doing? So, he probably he probably asked me. You know what? He probably asked me if that's real. Like that's probably like, are you messing with me? Like you probably that's probably the first thing he would ask. Like are you trying to put me on? You know, am I being recorded right now? You're gonna oh, put this on the internet. That's probably that would have been the that would have been the funniest thing if you did that from your brother Joel. He'd have been like, what? What? <laughs> you would? I, I I know you. You couldn't hold the laughter. So no, okay. been, that would have been. I crazy. couldn't be. You know this? I I can't make eye contact. If I make eye contact, I'm gonna start laughing. Uh, <laughs> so I'd probably look away. <laughs> that's crazy. That's great. I'll be honest. There is nothing like taking in a live basketball game, especially in the fourth quarter, down the stretch, being in that atmosphere and seeing it all play out right in front of you. There is nothing like it. And with the basketball season back. There is no other place better than game time that doesn't just have you covered for sports, but any type of concert or other events going on in town, you don't want to miss out with game time, especially with their new feature called game time picks. And that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. You can pick an upcoming game on the app. You can browse through the seats because of game time picks. Super deal gives you the absolute best price around and you can even customize your spot. So you know exactly what to expect ahead of the event. The curated deals make it easier to find the best price on great seats. And that's my favorite part of the app. Plus you get the seat views before you buy lowest price guaranteed event cancellation protection, which is big, right? job loss protection, etc. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Again, create an account and redeem the code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, let's let's, let's go on, man. Let's, let's get to the, the real nitty-gritty. Yeah, man, speaking of crazy, man, like you said. Joel, Joel Embiid, man. Joel Embiid. So Joel Embiid, three-game suspension, man. We'll wrap up with this. Um, just a, a, a crazy situation, and I would love to hear your input on it because we spoke briefly before we started recording. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, let's just state this conversation uh, for this actual segment now. Uh, official uh, word from the NBA, three-game suspension uh, for getting physical with uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer columnist uh, Marcus uh, Hayes. Now, Marcus Hayes had wrote a um, controversial column that talked about not only uh, Embiid's kid and being a hero and, 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 and you know, uh, short to work every day, but he mentioned his late brother, and, and I think that that was the part that had a nerve. Uh, reportedly, and B uh, approached the reporter about it. There was a back and forth, and he he shoved him. He shoved him. Uh, the initial report actually came from our guy who we had on uh, the at the beginning of the of the regular season, Keith. Mm -hmm. Our boy Keith. He he was gonna man. Yeah, so much going on. I was trying to get him on, but uh, I'm sure we'll, get, we'll catch up with him at some point. But he initially reported that. Uh, Joel Embiid had assaulted a reporter. So people kind of like, wait, what was going on? So he clarifies that, look, he, that he was shoved. Um, you know, uh, the news came out days later. Uh, Joe Dumars from the NBA spoke out about it. And he said, I quote, mutual respect is paramount to the relationship between players in the media and the NBA. Uh, while we understand Joel was offended by the personal by the personal nature of the original version of the reporter's column, interactions must remain professional on both sides and can never turn physical. Max, what's your take on this? You know, the, just the way, just the way, um, you know, Joe Dumars explained it. You're going to have somebody talk about your family mm -hmm. and, a, and a dead person in your family? Somebody who's too much. Away. Isn't there a line that you've crossed as a man? I mean, screw all this professionalism. But if I had somebody talking about somebody who had died in my family, Man, you 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 asking for an ass kicking, and, don't, and and you and and first of all, as a, we can be professional, but also there's a common courtesy, uh, being professional about what you might say to a guy or mm. what you might write about a guy. Right. right. And uh, you know you 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 mighty ballsy if you could if you still gonna come up in, in somebody's locker room, and insult a guy like that, and the guys already talked about it. But you're gonna show up anyway, dude. You, you, you. That no, no. I like to say that was Joel B wrong. Yeah, he was. He should shouldn't have got physical. 
if that had been me, would I got physical? Yeah, I would have. Yeah, it would have been. You're talking my my emotion when it came out. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially because it, it, it depends what the guy says back, right? If you say yeah. something that you you really don't like, it's then, gonna get then, then he yeah. say say it again, say it again. I think mm-hmm. that's what you would tell me. Say something. Again. Oh no, yeah. So apparently, okay. So this is what it was. He said, and I quote: um, "The next time you bring up my dead brother and my son again, you're going to see what I'm going to do with you." And I'm going to have to live with the consequences uh, and be set to, to Hayes in confrontation. The back and forth is where I don't, I, I guess what Hayes said, according to this report, is, but you do. And I guess that's when he pushed him. But then another report saying that there was sort of a back and forth. So I don't know if, if there was an extension, you know, before that or after the fact. But that's what led up to him putting get, getting physical. Well, I, I, think, I think we have to. VR got involved and separated too. Yeah, I think we have to understand one thing is that players are humans and there's only so much stuff that you can say to one before this guy's going to go the frick off. Right. Oh, I don't, I, I, I get it. I understand Joel and B being mad. He shouldn't have been mad, but he's also, you know, a, a player and right. he's probably frustrated now that he's not playing and people are talking. He said, you know, as much as I do for this, this bleak, bleeping organization in this city and showing up for NBA stuff. And all of a sudden now that, you know, you're, you're going at me, not, not as a basketball player, but you're stepping across the line by Man. talking about my child and also talking about my dead brother. There's a fine line that you cross in the black community. There's a fine fucking line that you cross. <laughs> <laughs> You don't talk about. I mean, right, Max, right, go just wait. You don't okay. need to say that to drive your point. Like no, that's just you, that's, you that's don't ridiculous. talk about Pete. What, what is it? How's it go? Just wait. Don't talk about nobody's mom. Oh you yeah. Don't, yeah. You know. You know. That was. You know. I think that was the line you were telling me when uh, uh, I was dealing with Draymond, and I somebody asked me a question. I said, "Well, go ask your daddy." Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, don't say mom. Boy, <laughs> but I said nothing about that boy's mom. It's like. <laughs> That would have been that would have been like, oh shit. That would have been like, okay. That so, could be misconstrued. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wait, Max, so, how you know that man's mom? What do you yeah, mean by that? <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, that there there's there's a line. Yeah. Uh that uh, you know, the report across. And um, you know, things happen. But three yeah. games, I thought they would give him one game, but uh three games is really really sending the message, considering Joel and B's salary. You know, you're probably saying three million. So it would be, let me see, three games would be uh, 82. You know, they get paid for 82 games. So that's what you're going in. That's what you're, you're finding. Mm-hmm. So whatever he get per game, say it was, say if he's making $150,000 a game, probably make the, more. Yeah, I got the total amount here. So it says, and B will lose uh, one million. Wait, yeah, one million. Uh, one million. So yeah, a little over a million. Yeah. So yeah. Joel Joel and Bede, so that's telling you that Joel and Bede is making some crazy uh, amount of money. So three games at, at, at whatever. So he's making all, yeah. all, all, he's making almost over three, he's making over three hundred thousand dollars a game. Some it's something like that. Yeah. Uh, which the average person can't can't fathom. I can't fathom. Hell, I played in the NBA. I can't even imagine that. And I I you know what my salary was, but still, just uh, yeah, that's uh, that's something that you know Philly has to deal with. He has to deal with. Uh, will he come back and apologize? I, I think it has to be most mutual on both sides. I think those two need to get together, sit down, break bread, and uh, let somebody kind of work that thing out. Because the for me, the reporter was just as wrong for what he said about Joel and B. Absolutely. I, 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 and I'll hark it back to there was a guy named Howard Manley when I first got into uh, broadcasting. And, um, you know, because I had my southern dialect and I was speaking a little slower. And radio is really tough to do. But he made this. Uh, he, he just came on one time and wrote, the, wrote an article and said, uh, Cedric Maxwell, he's the, the professor, professor of Ebonics. Of and, Ebonics. Wow. Uh, of e- Ebonics. And this was a black man. This was a black man. And I went someplace. I was at a show one day, 
And, you know, people walking up to me talking. And said, and this guy walked up to the yo, man, stuck his hand out and said, uh, I'm Howard Manley. And I put my hand out like, whoa, whoa, yo, man. And uh, well, should I just punch his ass for saying some, you know, stupid shit like that about me? But for me, that kind of stuff only made me better as a broadcaster because, look, yeah. I'm going to prove to you how good I am as a broadcaster. You know, just have the little time. If you didn't yeah. do this uh, directly, you know, it, that there's a there's a little it, it's a it's a process. I didn't go to school to learn this. You know, you just thrown in as a broadcaster, mm -hmm. and, you know, because I could talk. You know, it's different doing radio than there is doing television. So. Right. Um, so but look at that though, Max. It's been over twenty years. You you remember that guy's name, yeah. right? Like, that's the thing. Like, you don't. Do that, remember, I do remember his name. You I heard remember. Him. I mean, not yeah. you, but like reporters in general doing this job. You know, people don't forget how you make. What, what do you think? You, know what, you, what do you think? You're funny. Was that supposed to be funny? What do you mean? When he said, you know, you were, you know, you the professor of ebonics. You writing that now? As a black person, how would you attack another black person? I'd probably, to be honest with you, I'm keeping it on like we do here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like, yo, you trying to hand yeah. it to a, a specific audience here? You trying yeah. to make me paint, you know, paint a picture as like I'm this, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't have the credentials or the knowledge for this job because of the way I speak or because, you know, that's how I would have said it. Especially what's this, 2002 or so, early yeah. 2000. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you, is this how you try to uh, impress the white folks? Like straight up, like you know, <laughs> that's what I would have said. Is that what you said? No, I didn't. But that made me think about exactly what you said. Right. And for that to happen. And what kind of pictures is, does that paint in Boston for that to happen and for your editor to let that go? In right. The, I mean, That's another editor, part of this too, your, Mac. It your fills out your inquiry. Approved, they your release editor, that. Yeah, call your them. editor right. has to approve stuff. But right. what does it say about your editor when you, when you go to your editor and say, I'm, I'm going to write this about this dude? And it gets through copy. You know, other people mm -hmm. read your copy. It just doesn't go in. Mm -hmm. So um, I was a little, I was very disappointed and disillusioned. And, uh, you know, if I was that, if I was that dude and if it had been something different, suppose he had said something about my mom or, or somebody who had passed away. Now, now Man. what, now what position am I in? And I think right. that's the same thing you look at Joel and B. You come. The, the locker room is supposed to be a professional place. It's supposed to be a house. It's supposed to be a family. And mm -hmm. it's going to be mutual respect between players and the media. That, that's, yeah. how, that's, how it, that's how it's supposed to go. But there's a line that you just don't cross. And I do feel like that, um, you know, this reporter crossed the line that, uh, you know, he shouldn't have crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Max. Well, uh looks like MB is scheduled to make his uh debut. This is actually gonna be against the New York Knicks and it's the it's the uh the, the NBA Cup. It's an NBA Cup game. So that he's slated to make his uh season debut wow. against the Knicks wow. next week. So well that well, that's gonna put that much more pressure in this situation. Hey, take it out on the court, Joel. I'd love to see him ball out, drop forty or something, a little forty piece on cat, you know, on the Knicks, yeah. something a little message. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know, man. Philly's Philly's different. Philly's different. I, again, I, I'd love to get uh, Keith Pompey's uh, perspective mm -hmm. at some point. Uh, I know he's his phone must have been ringing off the hook at the time when uh, he kind of just dropped that 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 bombshell before the whole news broke. He essentially mm -hmm. broke the story uh, because he saw it firsthand. So, um, but yeah, um, shout out to Keith Pompey for sure because we, we got we, 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 we got to get up with Keith because I love it when he gets. When we make Keith go real, he was already. Remember going into the season, he was already like, I don't know about when, these. Guys. When Keith was on that broadcast that time, he's we used some line. I'm like, what? What kind of black line was that you used? Some, oh, that's right. Some, oh, yeah. some word he used or some way he phrased it. I'm like. What? What do you say? And, so, then, and then you, you got him to admit it. You're like, you know what, Max? You're right, man. I should have said that. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I, I, funny, to pull, I, I almost pulled this black card going, yo, man. Yo, 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 yo. You forgot come, what show he was on. That's come on, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you must think you're doing, you know, inside the NBA uh, <laughs> or yeah. show. No, this is. The Cedric Maxwell podcast. This is what what do we do, Joe Sway? What do we do on this podcast? We keep it on hundred. Keep it on the hundred. We hey, yo, and he went he went off for like a, a minute or two and you went all the way back. Like, what was that line you said? <laughs> you didn't forget we that. We're gonna we gonna keep it on the hundred. Yeah, and you know, 
guys, we we uh, again Absolutely. we so appreciate you guys uh, who've been on the, who followed us on our podcast and stuff like that. We just we're so appreciative of what you've done for us, and uh, and again, shout out to. Uh, you know all the people who come up, but that, but uh, and talk to me about the podcast. But in particular, uh, the young woman in Atlanta uh, that came and uh, shouted out. Uh, definitely would like to get your information. Want to send you one of those? Uh, how about them damn Celtic T-shirts? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a probably yeah, that was, you. You it was really cool meeting you, and uh, you know took a picture with you, um, and and watched the Celtics dismantle the Hawks down there. It was crazy. Yeah, they did. And we'll see how they uh, continue on after that loss against the Warriors. I'm not too worried about it, but a little adversity would be good for these uh, mm-hmm. you know, defending champions. Nothing wrong with that. I'm sure Joe Mazzulli appreciates that for well, sure. Well, here, here's one thing I'll, before we go that I'll ask you. Um, the Celtics are actually like going to probably go to the White House and meet with Joe Biden on, uh, oh. I think it's the 22nd or 20th of, uh, of this month. Uh, so, uh, let me ask you a question. Let me pose to you this question. What you got, is, Max? Is this the last time an NBA team will be in the White House for the next four years? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Man, I just thought of all the potential champions in the next four years. Absolutely, I don't see, bro. Absolutely. I don't see any of them going. I don't see Absolutely. any of them going. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I don't mean that, you know, not not disparaging, but, you know, uh, that was that this is probably the last time that the NBA team, uh, NBA team, WNBA team, NFL team, uh, oh, yeah, uh, foot baseball to any any sports team is going to be in the White House for the next four years. So you better get on board right now. And yeah. Celtics, Celtics might be this. And they just put it this way. They might be the last team. No, Tatum, Jalen, get all the pictures you can get. Yeah, Make sure yeah. you have a time of your life there because <laughs> last, <laughs> this is, part, nice. just way this is we're gonna keep it on the hunt. This is last call for alcohol, okay? <laughs> this is at the <laughs> this is at the club way back in the day when they come on going. The lights right, coming on. Last call, get your drinks in. This is last call for alcohol. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is at a, a black club when you about two o'clock in the morning, everything's about to end, and they finna shut down the bar. They will come the on and they will make that announcement. Last call for yeah. alcohol. And then there's always that one bartender being like, or bouncer being like, "You ain't got to go home, but you got to get, get the hell, hell out of here." here. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode of Cedric Maxwell Podcast. He's Cedric Maxwell. I'm Joseph Pavone. We'll see you guys next week going on everyone it's joseph pavone here if you made it this far that means you really enjoyed this video make sure you follow all of our social media platforms at celtic clns and of course follow us here on youtube